G'day Groover. There's one Groover. How are you doing tonight in uh, chats and cooking, <laughs> cooking and chat in the shitty kitty kitchen? We are going to be working with the most polarizing vegetable around, the Brussels sprout. Hi Anne Marie, I'm great, darling. How are you doing? How's your weekend going? I've just got back from my first Pfizer shot and apart from having a tail now, I feel pretty good. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? So, yeah, I've, I've got a tail now, but other than that, I'm feeling okay, although I was told the sort of, you know, possible side effects of the Pfizer kick in, like, you know, within 24 hours. So... I'm sort of hoping it's, if I'm going to have some, it's tomorrow and I can just chill out tomorrow at home, do some cooking, do some, I don't know, I feel like hanging some photos in my little snug that I've been building. Hey, Morgan. Um, oh, you just went into lockdown, Amory. Oh, God, I'm not on top of the news. I, I did see a headline about more restrictions for seven days. Oh, well, lots of cooking will be happening in your place too, I imagine. I'm just going to find my lip balm. I've only just got home, so I'm a little bit disorganised and even the camera angle isn't fantastic. Uh, let me put the camera on. There we go. G'day, Groovers. It's a static camera again. Hey, Casper, how are you? Sunny is watching me from, she's on the arm of Ruby, which is my one and a half seat, love seaty thing. She's supervising from over there. So yeah, we're going to make a Brussels sprout, uh, Brussels sprouts ham, and ricotta pizza. Although I don't like ham, so I'm swapping out the ham with some bacon. All of New South Wales in lockdown for seven days. Well, it was getting to that point, wasn't it? Something pretty radical had to happen. Morgan, I thought you were on a on a plane somewhere. I just left you a message saying safe travels <laughs> while I was sitting in the um, clinic. You have to sort of sit for 15 minutes while they observe you just to make sure you don't have any kind of anaphylactic shock or anything, I guess, after the vax. So I'm completely unprepared. Normally I like to have things good to go. We're just going to make it as we go. Now, there, this is actually, I've put the link to the recipe um, in the video description. It will make four pizzas. So I'm going to do, like be doing pizza for one. I'm only going to make one. So everything we're doing, we're kind of doing a quarter of it. Yeah, got my first one, Casper. Um, it's been a bit of a an ordeal. I might start um, getting a few things happening and then we'll chat because I've got a few things, a bit of prep to do. Um, you had three people from Sydney came to Albury for the vax. Oh, desperate times, isn't it? So I've chucked the oven onto 240 degrees Celsius. I normally use a pizza stone, but for the sake of one pizza, I'm not going to bother. Um, but, yeah, pretty high heat when you're making a pizza. If you're in a Fahrenheit place, it'll be 475 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but I'm going to first up, uh, what am I going to do? Um, in fact, I might do the Brussels sprouts, I'll get the Brussels sprouts prepped because they need to cook in the oven, um, for about six minutes. So let's get the Brussels happening first. <laughs> But yeah, just a reminder, I'm literally making one pizza. <laughs> Granny fucker 14. <laughs> Looks lovely. I haven't done anything yet. Or are you talking about the thumbnail? <laughs> Granny fucker 14. Oh yeah. We get them all on this channel for some reason. So the Brussels sprout. Um, anyone a fan in chat? I think most of us had mums that cooked them really badly and when they're cooked properly so for one pizza you only need four four of the little fuckers you love it all granny fucker 
God. It is a lovely screen name. I've had a few recently. Hi, Francesca. You've just arrived to meet Granny Fucker. Holy shit. Holy shit. So our little Brussels sprouts, if you were um, making four pizzas, you'd need 16 of them. All right. I love Brussels sprouts when they're, hey, Joey Wilson, you're watching while you wash up. Nice. I've only just got home from my vaccination. So, yeah, I'm making a bit of a sort of supper, really, late, and, late night dinner. I might go live again later on. I don't know. Had fun going live late last night. There were actually people around. But, yeah, I had a craving big time for Brussels sprouts. I'm just removing, like, the outer skin because it's usually a bit munted and it's not nice so if they've got a kind of dodgy looking outer skin remove the foreskin all right ski now i got the pfizer casper i got i was in an astrazeneca clinic and i got bumped out of it because of my age when that directive came in that people only people over um no i don't know granny 14. i don't know you either granny fucker 14. <laughs> but as long as you behave yourself you're welcome here um morgan you might have to be on high alert we don't know we don't know the work of the granny fucker i know you well hi andrea B, you're in Ireland. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Andrea B. You know me. I don't. When trolls come in and tell me that I know them, it's like, yeah, well, I don't know you as Granny Fucker Fourteen, right? So, are we just thinly slicing the Brussels sprouts? And yeah, I told you it's a polarizing vegetable. You think you know Granny? <laughs> So, yeah, it went to the 60s and over for AstraZeneca, so I got bumped. Then I was booked in for a Pfizer clinic and I went to South Australia and they went into lockdown and I had to self-isolate, so I got bumped from that clinic. And now here I am on a fucking Saturday night raging, raging at the clinic. Your bangers, no, bangers and mash are great. Nothing wrong with bangers and mash. I was just craving Brussels sprouts and I thought, why not do a something a bit unusual. I'm going to show you how to make a really yummy pizza that has Brussels sprouts on it. The granny you know is a nice old lady. <laughs> really? <laughs> we'll see. I had the weirdest trolls in yesterday too, last night. Yeah, exactly. Come in. Hi, Plumy Plumy. Yeah, come in under your normal name if you know me. What's with these? They had a troll that said that to me last night too. I've been here before and it's like, oh, not under that name you haven't. I'm not a psycho. Yeah, Grandma Ducky's awesome. We love Grandma Ducky. So we've just thinly sliced our Brussels sprouts. Nice and thin. When they cook properly, they're amazing. If you can be a MILF, you can be a GILF. Oh, a granny, I'd like to fuck. There aren't just as many wet dreams, dry and dusty. Good heavens. Um, you're having roast pork tomorrow night. I'm allergic to pork. I can eat bacon because it's been cured. But you had tacos? Nice, Gregory. You don't like sprouts and bacon? Well, that's okay. You can just hang out casserole for dinner oh cool everyone's letting me know so i'll just get the brussels sprouts in the um oven because yeah we just want to get them cooked so if you were cooking like a pizzas like four pizzas you'd need a big baking tray but we're just doing a small amount so i'm not even going to worry about a baking tray i'll have a chat in a minute i'll have a look at chat once i've got the sprouts in but chuck them into like a baking tray or I'm just going to use a baking dish. Whatever you've got will work. Curry sausages. You love Mexican food, Francesca? Yeah, I love Mexican food too. 
So just whack them in like on a baking tray, on a baking dish, whatever you've got. Chuck on some creepy kangaroo. <laughs> Holy shit. Hello. Um, creepy kangaroo. <laughs> whack on some oil. We want to add some salt, sea salt. Oh, thank you, Andrew B. Is that how you found me? God, that was that a while ago? I haven't been on that channel for a, quite a while. I've moved on. Well, I haven't had much time to do much YouTubing, but some cracked pepper on the brussels. And then just give them a bit of a toss because who doesn't like a toss-up, right? Your pizza is pineapple, cheese, mushrooms and tomato. I like pineapple on pizza. That's another divisive discussion though, isn't it? Some people love it. Some people hate it. just going to wash my hands. And whack those fuckers in the oven for about, probably because it's not that many, they probably won't even take six minutes. So I'm going to put them in for about five. We'll see. Just get my little timer because I always start reading chat and forget I've got things cooking. Because you're all so good looking. You like that granny fucker. <laughs> I did toss those sprouts. So we just want to cook them until they're a little bit tender. We don't want them too crunchy. Yeah, I love, hey, Coach Cleofloss. I love ham and pineapple pizza. I'm a big fan of the Hawaiian. Yum. Yummity yum. Now we're just going to make the um, little passata base, you know, that goes on the pizza, the tomato base. Where's a little bowl? It's not a little one, but we'll use this one. Look at this. It looks like a little stubby. <laughs> I'm sick of buying huge bottles of Passata and using like three tablespoons and then having to chuck them out. So, yeah, I should scr scr stream every day. I've got a full-time job. I can't, well, a full-on job at least. I'd love to not have to work and go live every day. But, yeah, so I've got a little stubby and it's cherry tomatoes. I actually like cherry tomatoes more than big tomatoes, to be honest. Um, I'm going to just make this base according to the recipe because otherwise it will be like, you know, three tablespoons. But we want to put about half a cup of the passata in the bowl. Looks about right. And we're going to crush a clove of garlic in there. What's your room made up to this weekend? Anyone done anything exciting? That looks spicy, not really. Actually, I'm going to chuck a bit more passata in there. I am a little bit breathy after my shot. Nothing too serious, but, yeah, I'm a bit breathy. Even what? This is healthy, man. This is a healthy pizza. There's multiple... <laughs> tomatoes in a medicine bottle <laughs> it was the smallest bottle of passata i could find <laughs> <laughs> miss sunny is watching me hello baby she's seriously staring at me just going who are you talking to i'm on youtube moogie just gonna crush a clove a clove of garlic Your cheek, your chesty too. 
one of those DDs. You do remember boobs? I have to warn you, Claire has the funniest comment. Well, I hope they, they save some of them from where I can read chat because, you know, occasionally I'm actually cooking. Sunny's now joined me in the kitchen. Hello. You ate all your dinner like two hours ago, kiddo. You don't get food now. You've got biscuits there if you're hungry. Eat them. Yeah, now to you too. <laughs> Well, the, I was expecting a hilarious comment, and the comment was, yeah. I've seen the thing where some chick said a spider did a screenshot. Fuck me, it was funny. I think I saw it on Hartley. A spider did a screenshot. Yeah, garlic, Andrea. We've whacked some garlic in there. Birdie num nums. And we're just going to chuck some more salt and pepper. This is super easy, this pizza, by the way. So whack in some sea salt. Chuck in some more ground pepper, black pepper. And then we're just going to mix this up with a little spoon. And that's the tomato base that's going to go on the pizza. Oh, Brussels sprouts. Gregory's going live. Really? Well, hopefully um, I won't be too long and I can jump over if you're still live. Has a big show to do. Well, really? That sucks. I'll try and make this super fast and then we can all go over and check out Gregory. How, how does that sound? All right, let's get out of the way for a sec. Let's see what these sprouts have done. At 9 p.m. Oh, cool. So an hour from now, right? Okay, so there's that little sprouts out of the oven. They're a lot more tender now. Who doesn't love a tender? I've got a bit of sizzle happening too. But, yeah, they're a lot more tender than they were before. They're going to be much more delightful to eat. Just whacking in there, beat the living daylights out of it. We'll take the piss for a fortnight and Americans won't have a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, with Casper and Pug. Pug. Australia versus New Zealand. Morgan's going to rain check. 5 a.m. Yeah. But all right, so we've got an hour. That'll be perfect. I'm not, I'm not going to be alive for that long. Once this pizza's out of the oven, you can all see how spectacular it is. We'll be done. Now, I'm cheating. I do have a um, pizza base or it's a pita bread that was in my freezer. Took it out about 15 minutes ago and it's now defrosted. So that's our little pizza base. We're going to put the tomato passata mix that we've just made. Spread it with a spoon. Greg thinks Queensland's the rest of Australia's enemy. Um, really? That's interesting. I think I think Western Australia is the rest of the country's enemy because they're so far away. And they do their own thing over there. It's the Wild West. I mean, there's so many Queenslanders have moved to Tasmania, so... They're not really our enemy. We're the people that get picked on by the rest of the country. A fortnight, Americans call it bi-weekly. Yeah, they've got a lot of weird expressions. All right, so the tomato passata is on the base. Next up, we're going to chuck the Brussels sprouts on. We're going to whack those little fuckers around it. Just distribute evenly or randomly, whatever tickles your fancy. Oh, 
And thanks to, by the way, I think there's stuff happening in chat that I'm not, like you guys are having a conversation, which is awesome. But some of the stuff I'm reading, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll just keep putting my my Brussels. They smell amazing. The trick with Brussels sprouts is not to boil the fuck out of them till they turn grey like our mothers and grandmothers did. If a Brussels sprouts cook properly, holy shit, they're great. I crave them. A friend of mine can't stand them. He calls them little green communists. <laughs> but he's not alone. Like shitloads of people can't stand it either. All right, next up we're going to whack the bacon. There you go, guys. Hopefully that'll make it a bit more interesting. And check this out. <laughs> Pioneer bacon, one kilo. It was on special. It, there might be bits in it that aren't fabulous, but it looks pretty good to me. It was like six bucks. I picked up my usual bacon, which I pay crazy like ten bucks for because it's worth it. And um, and then I spotted out of the corner of my eye this bloody foot long kilo of bacon for five ninety nine. So yeah. What I'm going to do is, after this live, I'm going to portion it up and freeze it. But do I eat ko oh, koala bears? Um, yes, the sous vide koala is delightful. The trick is to slow cook because it's quite tough meat otherwise. So I'm just going to open I've never bought a, a packet of bacon this friggin' big. Bi-weekly means twice a week. Yeah, in Australia, bi-weekly means twice a week. When you get paid, it's every two weeks, that's a fortnight. Bi-monthly. Drop bear steaks. Clear. This is really nice looking bacon, guys. It's all it's looking the part. Um, and it, funny enough, the recipe says to tear the ham, so we're just going to tear the bacon. But yeah, I can't complain. This is this. Oh, that's actually shit. Way too much bacon. Oh fuck it, you can never have too much bacon. All right, we'll get that over here. Sunny bum, you're sitting right at my feet. Not an ideal spot. <laughs> Pune Handler, why does that name keep coming up in my chat? And you're just going to tear the bacon or the ham and chuck it, you know, around the pizza line. I mean, I think everyone knows how to make a pizza, right? But this is a kind of a fancy one. It's fancy, everybody. And I have pulled off way too much bacon. We're pulling off and we're tossing because that's how we roll in this kitchen. There's a lot of pulling off going on. Actually, Sunny, see if you like that. Come here, Bubs. Gave her a little piece of bacon. Let's see if she's a fan. Next up. This might sound weird to people. But we're going to put some blobs of ricotta cheese on this pizza as well. Um, just going to put little blobs of it. Not the firm stuff, just, you know, ricotta out of a tub. I love ricotta when it's got, it's got to have other yummy things with it. It's a bit of a non-event without. I could have been a bit more artistic and made that a bit prettier. You get the drift though, guys. Just chuck on some ricotta. Work that in the fridge. You ate it. You like the bacon. Lucky girl. Cool. She's definitely my cat. 
Now, this uh, chili is a little bit old. I'm half expecting it to be. I don't know. It's it's okay. That's just a bit. That bit's just a bit dodgy. Yeah, ricotta. I know. Like I normally put like mozzarella or um, even feta. I put on pizzas, but yeah, ricotta. It is a sort of semi-healthy recipe, though, you know. So we're going to jazz. This pizza is getting weird. Trust me, it's going to be delicious. This is all about trying things that are a bit out of there, you know, a bit out, out there. Why not? I love me some chilli. I'm not going to put all of this on this pizza, but... Whack your bits of chilli on if you're into chilli. If you're not, what's wrong with you? Might break those three pieces up though. That would have been a blow your tits off mouthful. All right. I'm running out of bench space. And lastly, I'm just going to wash my hands again. Pizza's getting weird. Can't eat the same shit every day. I can't. I like trying new things out. I'll let you know if it's weird or not when we eat it. Um, lastly, I've got a blend of Parmesan and Pecorino, Pecorino. I wanted a block of Pecorino cheese but couldn't find any. So I did spot a bag of extra sharp Parmi and Pecorino. So we'll whacking that over the top yeah chili cha cha your baby about eating chilies well you can always if you do them in those big sort of chunky pieces you can always pull it off you know if you don't like it go nuts with the cheese Pecorino is like a really sharp, bitey sort of cheese. It's beautiful. It's in um, I'll know I'll know how you'll know it, Morgan. If you've ever had um, Paul Newman salad dressing, one of his salad dressings has pecorino cheese in it, and it's so yummy. And we're going to whack this little fucker into the oven for about eight or ten minutes. We want it to be crisp and golden and obviously we want um the bacon to get a little bit crunchy as well so we're whacking that in the oven yeah that was a bit hot for you wasn't it sunny bun what have i done with me little timer because i always start chatting throw in an egg now that would make it weird Okay, I'm going to get myself a ginger beer. I've survived the COVID shot, so the vaccination. There you go. Not that that's more interesting than the um, bench top, but might be slightly better. So, okay, Casper thinks it's a weird pizza. What the devil is a ginger beer? You don't know ginger beer? No, I'm not sad about Harold Holt. <laughs> Finally, I was waiting. I was told you one line is wicked. I was starting to doubt the rumour. Yeah, I have to say, the only... Do I miss John Howard? No. I don't. But if I had to choose between... If we had to have a Liberal Prime Minister and I had to choose between him and Scott Morrison, I'd actually choose John Howard. Yeah. 
you got Moderna. Moderna's only about to arrive in Australia. I'm cleaning things up. Made you sick for two days. Casper had the Astra. Um, do you know what's weird? Like, because I'm left-handed, I had to get my jab in my right arm. And about five minutes after I got the jab, I started getting these pains in my left arm exactly like where I would have got the shot, like on the other side. Exactly, the Pentecostal Prime Minister. I know, it sounds weird saying I'd prefer John Howard, but at least he wasn't a happy clapper, right? I'm not saying he was... Fun fact, Kevin Rudd is your fourth cousin. <laughs> I'm Pfizer too. How did you go with it, Francesca? Because I am... I'm a bit chesty, like a bit, um, I feel like I've got, not asthma, but, you know, like a bit of a hay fevery kind of chesty thing going on. But I'm just cleaning up. That's one of the reasons I turned the camera off so I can tidy things up. Holy shit, this, this, this bloody foot long of bacon. I'll break that up after this live, I think. I'm getting as much put away as I can, though. You had the aches and pains. Hey, Ruth. You had no problem. Your friend got very sick. Your roommate got Pfizer and felt like a minor cold. Casper had AZ. I had the aches and pains for a full day. Next day was completely fine. Hmm. You don't know Kevin Rudd, but I only found out when his family tree was in the Women's Weekly. How you doing, Ruth? I mean, it sounds to me like Pfizer has more of a negative effect on younger people. Um. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I had the flu shot this year, the flu shot, and had absolutely no reaction, like, whatsoever, not even a sore arm, nothing. It was quite bizarre. Like, I know these vaccinations are more painful, but I'm hearing mixed stories. The only thing I'm noticing is I feel like I'm a bit hay fevery. Well, not even hay fever. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to sneeze. A little bit wheezy, a little bit sort of asthma -y. You might have, you might have just wanted to sleep through your fortieth. Oh, that's right. That seems like forever ago now. They're now saying we'll need boosters after six months. <laughs> Joey's being followed by K Rad on Twitter, Kevin07. Your birthday, when was it? Was it back in yeah. We I, I did a happy an early happy birthday in case I missed it from memory. And then I think was it around the time I was in Adelaide? I can't remember. But happy belated again, Morgan. Kevin 07. So I'm drinking a Stone's ginger beer. It reminds me of Stone's green ginger wine. Are any of you old enough to remember that? July the 10th. That's right, the same day as my friend Georgie. Well, the day before, sorry, she's the 11th. I was over there for her 50th. It was the day I flew to Adelaide it was your birthday. Happy belated birthday to you. Happy belated birthday to you. Were you anywhere near the Oval back in 73? I hope not. I was only six. What's your Twitter name, Joey M. Wilson? 
Ruth, I had a bad arm and felt rough for a few days. Our numbers are going up again and the hospitals stopped most visitors again. Oh, no, your friend's back in full PPE. Yeah, this we're not having a lot of luck in New South Wales. It's getting pretty bad, actually. I've only heard ginger beer in Harry Potter. Yes. Kinky bitch. <laughs> I'll look out for you on the Twitters. I'm Traces of Nuts on Twitters too. Tori, I told you. Tell me what, Casper? I missed it. What did you tell me? Oh, Clear Floss's comments. Where's Clear Floss Constructions or is this the same person? And where did Granny Fucker 15 or whatever it was go? Is there an original or an old South Wales? There should be. Yeah, Australian numbers. I mean, hey, lovable rogue. Kevin 07 follows. That's that's what I said. Kevin 07 follows kinky bitch. <laughs> hey, Vivian. All good here in Tassie. Just had my first shot. Um, doing all right. I've grown a tail. Um, but other than that, feeling all right. Granny had a hot date with a 90-year-old. Nice. Nice. Where is that nitwit Aussie Ella? He doesn't come here anymore except to give me a thumbs down. Oh, Ruth, speaking of, I think you were asking me who did the, the voice of Big Daddy-O in episode eight. I haven't gone back to check, but I have a horrible feeling it is, in fact, Aussie Outlaw, and I'm glad that you're enjoying him doing that, but things went south very quickly after that episode with him and my channel, and you are familiar, Ruth, with my one thumbs down. -er. Well... Just a theory, but it's a pretty solid one. So, yeah, you might want to rethink your adoration. He didn't take to other people having a go at Big Daddy-O and another guy who literally said one line led to all kinds of ridiculous dramas and... He started his own channel using the character from The Soft Six and that was the end of things. So, yeah, not really sure why I got plagiarised and treated like shit, but there were plenty of people that were in episodes. Morgan was Big Daddy-O one day. So, yeah, he gone. He's often on, I don't know. Kitchen Ladies channel, as in Money Ramblings blog. Oops. Is my weird pizza ready? Yeah, Donna Hay's great. This is um, a recipe from um, her Light and Easy magazines. So I haven't made it before. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see if how she's looking. Oh. Perfecto. The trick is a hot oven, guys. Oh, hang on. The trick is a hot oven. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Now, bless Donna. She did say, and I've already put it away. Once it's come out of the oven, whack a little bit more um, fresh cheese, like, on top. It smells amazing. You have a crack in it, Crafts Casper. Oh. Huh. 
not so weird now. God, it smells good, but it does primarily at the moment smell of the Pecorino cheese. So, oh, can you hear that crunching? And how easy was that? Like, <laughs> it's so crunchy, I can't cut it with this bloody knife. Here we go. I don't have one of those little rolly wheely pizza cuttery things. I used to. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, yum. Mm -mm. There is pizza for everyone. All this bacon's really yummy too. That kilo of bacon I got for six bucks. Oh, my God. It's delicious. And there wasn't any fat on it. Well, there's a tiny bit of fat that I gave to Sunny, but it didn't need to be like, you know, trimmed within an inch of its life, which is a pretty piece to put up to the camera. That with a bit of the crust on the side. Hang on, I'll just break that off and eat it. I'm not stopping at one piece, are you kidding me? Oh my god, guys, look at it. Can you can you see it? Right, I'm going to have a mouthful and give it a rating. Yeah, I'll be interested to see. Um, they, Vivian, the Brussels sprouts were cooked in the oven for about six minutes with some olive oil, salt and pepper. Um, three to the States and you didn't have dinner. <laughs> I'm making everybody hungry. I opened the live to a good-looking pizza and it's 5 in the morning. <laughs> now Ruth needs food. All right, it's pretty hot, like steamy hot. But I want to get some Brussels sprout in my first mouthful. So, yeah, for those of you who came in late, this is a Brussels sprout bacon. The recipe says ham. If you like ham, chuck ham in it. I'm more of a bacon girl. Yeah, hit those thumbs up. Um, so we thinly slice the Brussels sprouts, mix them with some olive oil, salt and pepper and whack them in the oven. The oven's at 240 or 475 degrees Fahrenheit, way better than Domino's. Um, where's the garlic bread? No, I'm trying to do the, this, I'm not doing garlic bread as well. <laughs> all right, so there it is in all its colourful glory. Oh, fuck yeah. Mm. Oh, my God. Yum. It's got, oh, yeah. I was craving Brussels sprouts, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad I tried this recipe. The pecorino cheese, hello, and the bacon and Brussels sprouts, and then that tomato with the garlic in it. It's got a really nice punch as well. It's not the hottest chilli I've ever had. I'll try some with the ricotta as well. Sorry, now I'm doing pizza ASMR. I'll turn the camera off and eat and we can chat. Look at that. Mouthful of yummy goodness. I'm craving. Oh, I love Brussels sprouts. I'm a fan. Mm. Oh, my God. Yep. Hi, Sandra. So does it make you weak at the knees? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, fuck me, guys. That's so good. That's a 10 out of 10. Um, the recipe is in the description. And I seriously think people should give it a crack, even if you don't think you'll like a Brussels sprout because they do not taste like the Brussels sprouts. Our grandmothers and mothers, that's a ginger beer. Who was asking about ginger beer? 
stones. This is an adults only version. Oh, you didn't get a notification. Well, we've only been live for 46 minutes and um, we've just made an amazing pizza scout. Brussels sprouts, bacon and ricotta. And the ricotta is sort of adding this like sort of yummy, creamy element. I love Brussels sprouts with bacon and pine nuts too. I've never made a Brussels sprouts pizza before though, so I thought I'd try something a little bit random. And I swear to God, guys, this is so yummy. So, yeah, the Brussels sprouts got thinly sliced and cooked with some olive oil, salt and pepper. We mixed together some passata with some salt and pepper and garlic. Put that on the base of the pizza. Then we added the Brussels sprouts, bacon, um, blobs of ricotta, some red chilli and a mixture of um, pecorino and parmesan cheese. Good to see you, Sandra. Mm. I wouldn't have thought of putting Brussels sprouts on a pizza either, but here we are. Mm. Ah, Morgan's a ricotta fan. This is so yummy. If you serve this up to friends, like if friends came over to, you know, watch movies or something and you made this pizza, half of them wouldn't even realise there's Brussels sprouts on there. Like they sort of just got this yummy, creamy, almost a bit like a leek vibe going on. You <laughs> bring ginger beer in your fork. Mmm. I've forgotten how much I love pecorino cheese. It's just got the most beautiful flavour. Thank you, Sandra. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yep. It's a 10 out of 10. It is fucking good. Oh, my God, it's good. Yeah, I've... I've got a pizza stone, Vivian, and um, I've got nowhere I really want to, like I don't want another thing on my deck. I can, I've got my Barbie out there, which is pretty much an oven because it's got a really heavy lid. Um, sexy as too, it's black and it's got big metal studs on it. It's like a bit of a bondage barbecue um, and a pizza stone and I find that's, you know, good enough. And to, this one I just did in the oven. I think a pizza oven would be a lot of work for just the sake of me making a pizza for one. But there's, I mean, I'll only eat this, these two pieces and I'll have the other half tomorrow. You dream of a pizza oven? Yeah, I've just got pizza stones and I'll whack them in the barbecue and chuck on the pizzas. One year at one of my parties we had... um like everyone just had to bring a pizza topping and I made all the bases and we just assembled our own pizzas. Well, you know, everyone was making them for everyone and just kept slinging pizzas onto the barbie. It was a really good way to keep everybody fed. And we even had like dessert ones with chocolate and marshmallows and you just got a ninja foodie which has a dehydrator function. You've dehydrated everything you can think of. <laughs> what was the best thing you dehydrated? Now, don't forget, everyone, Gregory Lawler is going live in 23 minutes. I'll whack him on and have a listen while I clean the kitchen. But, Morgan, I don't know if you heard me before, but um, there's a one of the Paul Newman's salad dressings I think it might be his Caesar one has got pecorino cheese in it add some soy sauce no way I think the chili and the ricotta as a combo no oh, a bunch of fruit yum um 
But yeah, the Paul Newman salad dressing, I'm pretty sure it's the Caesar because I used to be addicted to that one when I was a uni student. And it's actually got pecorino cheese in it. Like when you shake the bottle, you can see the cheese in there. Dehydrated red pepper and tomato powder is awesome. Mm. Mm. So much better than getting one delivered. Mm. I think there is Paul Newman dressing still. I love putting chicken and buffalo sauce on your pizza. Mm, yum. What year is this? 1990? Huh? This is a contemporary pizza. If you've eaten or heard of a Brussels sprouts pizza before, I'll be very surprised. Someone asked, if you go to a party, what would you bring starting with your first initial? Tequila. He's got good Aussie knowledge, Casper. He's learning shit. He's learning lots of shit. <laughs> Should I open a restaurant franchise based on this? No, everything I cook on this channel is amaze balls. I haven't had a disaster yet. I'm wanting to. Everything's been so good. I do love my cooking though. Viagra? <laughs> well, that's taking the party down a few notches. Ah, Hershey Kisses, that's what you take, Scout. Nice. Okay, I'm keen to see what everyone else would take. Hmm. Thank you, Francesca. I'm sorry I keep eating. I can't not. I'm so, I'm so hungry. I'm vaccinated. I'm half vaccinated and I've got an appetite. But, yeah, um, if you don't like Brussels sprouts, I seriously suggest you try this pizza because there is nothing about this pizza that will remind you of the Brussels sprouts your mother cooked you. Casper's ute streams are non-existent in the current climate. Ah, uh, yes, Casper's bringing the drugs. Ruth is bringing radishes. <laughs> Morgan's studying salad dressing origins. I love Brussels sprouts too. And I crave them. I'll tell you why. Someone asked me earlier why it was a weird craving. Mm. I love the show, The Cook and the Chef, Maggie Beer and Simon. I can't remember his surname. Two South Australian cooks that both do recipes using a, an ingredient they have to hero. And yesterday... I had SBS food on while I was pottering around doing housey things and um, they both did a Brussels sprouts dish and one of them did a Brussels sprouts pasta that looked unbelievable. And I'm thinking the other one might have actually done a pizza, a different one. Yeah, Maggie's awesome. So Simon, I love them both. So then... Um, I started craving Brussels because I love them and I, I know how to cook them. And if you cook them beautifully, they're, they're great. They're a great veggie. They're one of my favourites. I, I would eat Brussels sprouts before, oh, I can't stand eggplant. Um, but even like I don't mind broccoli. I love broccolini, but I love Brussels sprouts more. I love Brussels sprouts more than cauliflower, more than cabbage. I do love a zucchini. I've got to say, on a courgette. 
I'll be there to watch the authorities chase you down and bring you to justice. Fair enough. Another um, another really nice way to do Brussels sprouts is pan fry them with garlic and then add, and it sounds kind of weird, add Spanish onion and beef stock and Dijon mustard and mix it all up in the pan. Oh, my God, it is so good. This ginger beer is alcoholic, but you can also get non-alcoholic ginger beer. And I've also got um, ginger beer, non-alcoholic ginger beer flavouring for my soda stream. I love ginger beer. I've actually got a recipe. I'm going to make some. I'm going to make some homemade ginger beer. I'm not a fan of cooked spinach either. I mean, I, I love it in um, spinach and feta triangles. And, yeah, it's good in a quiche. Yeah, see, Romano, well, yeah, Romano, Pecorino, pretty much the same thing. I think in Australia it's Pecorino. I think for you guys it might be Romano. But we can buy Romano here too. So... I'm not sure because I, I was actually looking at Romano tonight and then I spotted the bag of Parmesan Pecorino mix and I'm like, thank you very much. I mean, the little shop down the road for me sells blocks of Pecorino, but I was at the clinic for my, for my jab and there was a supermarket next door, so I'm like, I'll just grab a few. I needed to get a couple of things. I needed to get the ricotta, the Pecorino and the Posada. Francesca's crazy about spinach. I love spinach in salads, but when it gets cooked, it gets stringy and it's like a choking hazard. Yeah, a lot of people are into making kombucha. <laughs> and spinach is crazy about me. Oh, cinnamon apple moonshine. Yum. Yeah, that'd be nice at Christmas time. Some chicken wings. What was growing in your pantry, Vivian? What vegetable did you leave in there and forget about? <laughs> no, chicken wings, I don't need them as well. This is more than enough for me. I'll be full after these two pieces of pizza. I'll have the leftover tomorrow for lunch probably. And I made a, um, I've got to edit the video. But I also made a spicy carrot soup today, so I'll be uploading a video about that in the next few days. If you haven't tried carrot soup, and if you like pumpkin soup, you've got to try carrot soup. It's lighter. Um, it's not as sort of heavy, and you can put all these beautiful spices in it with, like, cumin, and then when you serve it, you can put, like, lemon zest and blocks, little crumbled blobs of feta cheese on top. Holy shit, it's so yummy. It's yummier than pumpkin soup, I swear. Oh, yum. Nothing better than homegrown veggies. This is so good. I know Casper thought it was weird, but it doesn't taste weird. Like every all the flavours work together. The base is really crunchy. The little blob of ricotta is perfect. It sort of it works with the chili. No, I don't want to hear about the kombucha mother. Spicy carrot and coriander is awesome too. You're not going to say anything about eating pizza with a fork and a... It just seemed easier when I'm live. I'm all for using hands too, but it just seemed more polite while I'm live. Oh, that's awesome, Scout. 
that's exactly what I want my channel to do. I want it to inspire people to try different stuff. I mean, I go live. I'm being rude now. Seriously talking with a big mouthful. Hmm. Pardon me. And I'm chomping with my new porcelain cap on my tooth that I had put on on Thursday. Far out. That was cool. I'm already chomping on it. Fair enough. I'll never be. Oh, the, the knife and fork. <laughs> I like just. It seemed easier than getting like you know, serviettes and I, if I used my hands, I would shove like two-thirds of one piece into my mouth and just sit here munching. But um, what I was going to say was everything I cook on this channel pretty much, I don't think I've done any of my, um, oh, I did breakfast a breakfast bowl that I make a lot, but for the most part what I make is, making it for the first time too because I kind of want to show people that you can have a crack at something and it'll turn out okay. Yeah, it's almost time for Greg Lawler. Ten more minutes. Is that right, Granny Fucker 14? Who's Fred? Fred is dead. Who's Fred? I mean, RIP Fred, but who is Fred? Shit, a few people have had their channel channels like shut down. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yum, yum, yum. That seriously is so easy too. Like in the time it took me to make that, you honestly, it's quicker time than ordering a pizza and then going and picking it up or waiting for it to be delivered is what creepy to say, granny fucker. You develop a food palate from a young age. Guess what, Tori? What, granny fucker 14? You had a showdown with Aussie Outlaw, defeated him. What kind of a showdown? Like a verbal one? I've never had a problem with him. Um, I mean, I've heard he was a bit unpredictable with his moods and stuff, but he was always fine he came up on my panel quite a few times and used to drop into his lives occasionally but yeah the soft six went all um it all went pear-shaped where is tams who's tams did you meet at Dawn for the showdown. Load up your pistols and then they he disliked your videos and he's blind. Two good reasons to hate him. I don't hate anyone, but oh Tamswell. Yeah, she was one of his mods, right? We well, went up on his panel a lot. I remember her. She came in here a few times, I think back in the day when I wasn't for some reason on a shit list because God forget, forbid I gave somebody else a turn up on my panel to read the part of a scammer. It's very weird. 
recently posted a video of the Adelaide Oval. Well, I was in Adelaide a few weeks ago. I didn't see him. Didn't go to Adelaide Oval either. His whereabouts on that tragic... Oh, are you talking about the Beaumont children? Was that 1973? Mm. Holy fuck, that was good. <laughs> yeah, Radelaide, Vivian's a fan. No, that was 1966. What crime are you talking about? Cleo used to blame Space Monster for that crime. Oh, my God, there's all these private jokes going on that I'm not getting. He's probably dreamed of singing a half. Oh, <laughs> gotcha, a cover song, yep. Hmm, granny fucker, I kind of feel like I might know who you are. I'm not sure what's going down with your name, though, but and the, uh, the American flag. Oh, yeah, Clear. I've, I've had a few chats with Clear. Yeah. You gave it you gave yourself away because of your ranting about Aussie Outlaw. <laughs> um Bless. God, that was yummy, guys. Oh my god, make it. Make it seriously. Well, it's almost time for good old Gregory, right? So we could wrap this up. Um but, yeah, I know exactly who you are, Granny fucker. <laughs> Even, did you pop in last night with another wacky name? Was that you as well? Why are you incognito? You do, Vivian, and I represented a few of them. Well, no, not a few. I interviewed one of the Snowtown murderers, took his statement. Um, yeah, you did. I thought so. Send you your scraps. Oh my god, that was so good, guy. That pizza, like, ah, you fucking weirdo was the name. <laughs> um, seriously, guys, yeah, bodies in the barrel. It was pretty creepy interviewing one of them, too. Um, the description, the link to that recipe is in the description, and seriously, give it a crack. It's really nice. Like, I don't feel like I've had a heavy dinner. I feel like I've had just a really, like, lots of beautiful flavours, really fresh. I've snuck a bit of veggies in there, um, little pops of chilli, and then the ricotta kind of doing a little cool-down effect, but the two together are really yummy. And then the pecorino cheese and that beautiful crunchy base. Like, they were so, that was so easy to make. Did he have any good recipes? No. Didn't talk food. It's kind of disgusting talking to someone about how they managed to get bodies into barrels. Trust me, no appetite after talking to that person. Don't know where Mel Mel is, Casper. She might be. It's time difference, don't forget. So it's like 6 p.m. I suspect she's feeding her family. She popped in last night, Morgan. Ruth needs food. Ruth, seriously gorgeous. Try that pizza. Oh, my God, it is so good. Um, but, yeah, I think it's time to wrap this up because Gregory Lawler is going live. I don't know if anyone's dropped his link into the chat, but he popped into my live on the beach the other day and quite a few people subscribed to him as well while we're on the beach so yeah if you're awake and feel like listening to some lads 
um, head over there because I think he said he's going live at at 10, uh, sorry, at 9. Hey, Jason Callum, we're just wrapping up, mate, but good to see you. So thanks for hanging out, everyone. I give that um, Brussels sprouts, bacon and ricotta pizza a 10 out of 10. It is very easy and shits all over the stuff you get delivered. Um, let me just get Graham's, oh, Graham, Gregory. Get, I'll get the link up and we can all head over there. It starts in one minute and 15 seconds. Oh, bless you, Scout. You beat me to it. Nice to see you, though, Jason. I'm be I've been thinking of you too. Um, everyone throw up some yellow hearts for Jason because his beautiful pet passed away. And Jason was incredibly kind to me when Biscuit died. And we all know how sad it is when our little animals have to leave us and move on so yeah if you can throw up some love hearts for jason that would be really sweet um it's very tough to lose a pet and we all know that animals are better than people on this channel so much love to you, Jason, and, yeah, you'll get lots of support from everyone in here too. So I'm glad you popped in. Thanks to everyone who did pop in and hang out. Um, that pizza rocked. Might see some of you over at, um, at Graham's channel. He's kicking off Lawless Corner. There are seven waiting and Francesca's already over there. So am I. So see you there, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me. I love you heaps. And Jason, jump on that link and come over and see what these lads are about to get up to. Take care, everyone. Stay groovy. See you guys.